2014 was the hottest year on record. The map seen here shows long-term changes in Earth's temperature compared to a 30-year baseline. Red, orange and yellow are warmer areas, blue is colder. Since temperature records began in 1880, the global average has increased by 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. It might not sound like much, but think about it this way. A one degree rise in your body temperature can lead to a fever. Five degrees can land you in the hospital. So guess what? Our Earth has a fever. And scientists believe Earth's temperature could rise by three to 10 degrees this century. Scientists expect global and regional fluctuations in temperature from year to year due to changing weather patterns. In 2014, the Midwestern US experienced a cold winter, but parts of Western US hit record high temperatures. When looking at decades worth of data, the ranking of 2014 as the hottest year reinforces the long-term trend of rising global temperatures, a trend driven by the increase of carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide levels are increasing because we're taking carbon out of the ground, mainly as coal, oil, or as natural gas, and we're burning it. When you burn carbon, you produce carbon dioxide, which contributes to the planet's greenhouse effect. And as we continue to increase that, uh, we're gonna continue to see warming and more records being broken, not every year, but on a pretty regular basis. The Earth's atmosphere is a mixture of gases. Some are known as greenhouse gases. That's because they trap heat from the sun and warm the Earth. That's good, because without greenhouse gases, our planet would freeze, and life as most of us know it would be impossible. These greenhouse gases, mainly water vapor and carbon dioxide, naturally cycle between the land and atmosphere and ocean. And over the ages, these greenhouse gases have reached a delicate balance that results in temperatures that we like a lot. It's been that way for thousands of years, until the last 150 years. That's when people began burning fossil fuels. Those fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas, contain carbon that's been locked away from the natural cycle for eons. But when we burn them, that carbon joins with oxygen to make carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere. It throws the natural balance out of whack. The more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the more heat that is trapped, and the warmer it gets. And the warmer it gets, the more the climate changes, and the higher the ocean will rise. The more we learn about carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, the better we can deal with the changes caused by global warming, because good planets are hard to find. The Orbiting Carbon Observatory 2 NASA's first satellite dedicated to studying carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, one carbon atom sandwiched between two oxygen atoms. A greenhouse gas vital for life on Earth. But with warmer global temperatures, rising sea levels, melting glaciers and extreme weather events, the Earth is out of balance. A new NASA study predicts that by the end of the 21st century, the American Southwest and Great Plains are likely to experience longer and more severe droughts than at any other time in the last thousand years. So recent droughts such as the ongoing drought in California or in the Southwest, or even historical droughts such as the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, these are naturally occurring droughts that typically last several years or sometimes almost a decade. And our projections, what we're seeing is that with climate change, many of these types of droughts will likely last for 20, 30, sometimes even 40 years, even exceeding the duration of the long-term intense mega droughts that characterize the really arid time period known as the medieval climate anomaly. So how can we peer into the planet's future? Researchers combine natural observations and harness the processing capabilities of powerful supercomputers. The scientists looked at a thousand years of tree ring data and compare those records with soil moisture data from 17 different climate models in order to extend this drought information into the future. The models all show a drier world thanks to increased temperatures from human-induced climate change. But these computer simulations, these climate models, really represent our best understanding of the physics and the workings of the climate system. They're tested extensively against observations, and at the end of the day, if we want to investigate future climate, they are really the only tool that we have to use. How bad these droughts are likely to get 
has a lot to do with how much greenhouse gas emissions humans generate in coming years. Scientists looked at two different possibilities. First, a business-as-usual scenario where worldwide greenhouse gas emissions continue on their current course. In this case, the future risk of lengthy droughts rises to 80%. Alternatively, if the world were to take aggressive actions to reduce emissions, the models still show drying, but the trends will be less severe. In either scenario, droughts could potentially have major impacts in a region already facing water management concerns. These droughts really represent events that nobody in the history of the United States has ever had to deal with. And so even in the modern era, droughts such as the ongoing droughts in California and the Southwest, these normal droughts act as major stresses on water resources in the region. So we expect that with these much longer droughts, it's going to be even more impactful and cause even more problems for agriculture and ecosystems in the region. Why? For one thing, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, they raise the temperature by trapping heat. And warmer temperatures means, you guessed it, less snow and ice. As they melt, what's left behind are darker patches of land and water. And guess what dark colors do? Here's a hint. Ever try wearing black clothes to the beach? Not a good idea. Black absorbs more sunlight, thus emits more heat and makes you warmer. Not good for you or the Earth. Here are some other possible symptoms of planetary fever. Shrinking glaciers, shifting plant and animal ranges, sea level rise, more intense heat waves, stronger hurricanes. Experiencing any of these symptoms? It's time to seek attention right away Remember, the planet you save may be your own. The amount of CO2 in our atmosphere, produced through Earth's natural processes as well as human activities, is increasing and changing our planet. But just how much change our Earth can handle is uncertain, and OCO2 will provide answers. Creating the clearest picture ever of global carbon dioxide to help us better understand how the ocean, soil, atmosphere and forests absorb and give off carbon dioxide, not just as a snapshot in time, but as patterns over weeks, months and years. The Orbiting Carbon Observatory 2 will shed new light on understanding carbon and its role in our planet's future, sharing what we will learn with the world, helping us to better manage our resources and activities, and having the right information to make informed decisions. For this, and future generations.